Hey everyone, I am Ahmed Gad. I'm a research assistant at University of Ottawa and working with Paperspace on different machine learning projects. If you don't know already, Paperspace is a cloud computing platform for GPU accelerated applications like machine learning. Today, I'll be showing you how to use a confusion matrix for model evaluation and focus on accuracy, recall, and precision. The confusion matrix evaluates the performance of binary and multi-class classifiers. It is given the name confusion because it measures how the model is confused in differentiating between the classes. The size of the confusion matrix for binary classification is 2 by 2 because there are only two classes. The labels of the two classes are distributed across the rows and columns. Usually, the confusion matrix uses the positive and negative labels for the two classes, even if you are using different labels for the problem. According to your preference, select either the rows or columns to represent the correct and predicted labels. In this example, the rows represent the correct labels and the columns represent the predicted labels. Now, we are left with a matrix with four cells. Each of these cells have a label. The label is a sentence consisting of two words. The first word can be true or false. It is true if the classification is correct. In other words, the predicted and correct labels are the same and false otherwise. The second word can be either positive or negative, depending on the predicted class. Let's see an example. If the correct label is positive and the predicted label is positive, then the sentence will be true positive. It is true because the correct and predicted labels are the same and positive because the predicted label is positive. Another example has a correct label negative and predicted label positive. The label in this case is false positive. It's false because the correct and predicted labels are different and positive because the predicted class is positive. According to this discussion, let's see the labels of the four cells in the confusion matrix. The first cell label is true positive. This cell counts the number of positive samples that are classified correctly. The second cell has a label false negative, in which the positives are classified incorrectly as negatives. The third cell is false positive which has negatives classified incorrectly as positives. The last cell counts the number of negative samples classified correctly as negative. Let's calculate the confusion matrix based on an example of seven samples. By comparing the correct and predicted labels, the number of true positives is three because there are three positive samples classified correctly as positive. The number of false negatives is one because there is only one positive sample incorrectly classified as negative. The number of false positives is 2, because there are only two negative samples incorrectly classified as positive. And finally, the number of true negatives is 1, because there is only one negative sample classified correctly. After building the confusion matrix, let's now move to three important metrics, accuracy, recall, and precision. The accuracy is calculated as a ratio between the number of samples classified correctly to the total number of samples. The number of correctly classified samples is the summation of the true positives and the true negatives. According to our example, the number of true positives is 3 and the number of true negatives is 1. And this gives us an accuracy of 0.57. You should only use the accuracy to evaluate your model if the two classes are of equal importance and the data set is balanced. To see how data imbalance affects the accuracy, let's see an example of a classifier that is 99% accurate. You might think that the model is accurate across all classes, but in fact it was trained with 1000 positive samples and just 10 negative samples. The model made 999 correct predictions for the positive class and no correct predictions for the negative class. The reason why the overall accuracy is high is that the dataset is imbalanced. Let's now move to the recall. 
which is also called true positive rate or TBR for short. It's calculated as a ratio between the number of true positives and the summation of the number of true positives and the number of false negatives. Let's see an example of six samples where the model made false predictions for all the negative samples and false prediction for only one positive sample. Based on these predictions, the number of true positives is 2 and the number of false negatives is 1. So the recall equals 0 0.67. For a new classifier that is identical to the old one but just made one correct prediction for the negative class, the number of true positives is still 2 and the number of false negatives is still 1. So the recall is still 0 0.67. Even with more correct predictions for the negative class, the recall won't change. Based on this discussion, we can find that the recall is completely independent to the negative class. Regardless of how the negative samples are classified correctly or incorrectly, the recall won't change. The recall changes only based on the positive samples. So if one positive sample is classified correctly or incorrectly, the recall will change. For a new classifier that predicts all the positive samples correctly, the recall is now 1.0, which is the maximum value. You should only use the recall if you want to classify all the positives correctly without missing a single positive sample, and also it doesn't hurt to misclassify all the negatives as positives. And remember that the models that classifies all the positives and negatives as positives will have a recall of 1. The recall has a big issue of being unconfident of whether the sample classified as positive is actually positive or it was negative. To make a decision with confidence, we should use the precision. The precision is calculated as a ratio between the number of true positives and the summation of the number of true positives and the false positives. Think of the recall as caring about the quantity while the precision cares about the quality. The recall wants to classify many samples as positives without making sure whether the sample is actually positive or it negative. But the precision doesn't care about classifying many samples as positives, it cares about classifying samples as positives with high precision. The precision answers this question, what is the confidence of classifying a sample as positive? If the precision is close to 1, then we are confident that the sample classified as positive is classified correctly. But if the precision is close to 0, then we aren't confident of the decision. Based on an example of 6 samples where all the samples are classified correctly except for one positive sample, the number of true positives is 2 and the number of false positives is zero because there is no negative sample misclassified as positive and so the precision is one. If another positive sample is incorrectly classified as negative, then the number of true positives drops to one but the precision is still one. The precision changes if one of the negative samples is classified incorrectly as positive. In this case, the number of true positives is 1, and the number of false positives is 1, and so the precision is 0.5. If another negative sample is misclassified, the precision drops to 0.3. And this shows that the precision doesn't care about classifying many positives, but only classifying samples as positives with high confidence. That's it for this tutorial. Just to recap, we discussed how to use a confusion matrix for evaluating classifiers. Out of the matrix, three important metrics are discussed. The first one is the accuracy that is used if the two classes are of equal importance and the data set is balanced. The second one is the recall that is used if you care about the quantity more than the quality and you want to classify all the positives correctly without missing a single positive sample, but it doesn't matter how the negatives are classified. The third one is the precision, that is used if you care about the quality more than the quantity, and you want to be confident when classifying a sample 
as positive, but it doesn't hurt to misclassify positives as negatives. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on the comments or on Twitter at Hello Paper Space. Gradient offers a free GPU plan so you can run your machine learning projects at no cost. I highly recommend checking that out. Thanks for watching.